Okay, good evening to you all. I hope you had a pleasant weekend and we, we meet again uh, to do our introduction uh, to business management. Okay, just clear a few things here before we start. Okay, so I'm sure most of you now know me. Uh, my name is James uh, from Varsity Unlimited Tutors. We are just an organization that helps students with uh, research uh, and uh, tutorials in terms of uh, your education. So what we want to do today is we want to do introduction to business management. So on Monday, we did uh, economics uh, 1A. I think we did unit number one. And then on Thursday, we did analytical techniques. And today we are doing our uh, introduction to business management. During the next week, We'll be doing uh, informatics, 1A for the IT guys, and also business mathematics uh, for the, uh, for the rest of the guys who also be doing business mathematics. I think we'll be left with maybe public management and I think introduction to project management and uh, introduction to financial management, those three will be the ones that will be left. But our advice in due course, once their debts have been, I've been said. So for today, we just want to talk about management. Right. Um, okay. Let's see where we can start here. Okay. The usual stuff, uh, in case you, you like the lectures and you would want to continue the lectures with me, uh, the lectures will be done uh, in, uh, in March. That's when we start the paid lectures. Remember, like I promised, all the classes that I'm going to be doing in February are free. Uh, for anyone to attend and get the videos. But as I go towards March, uh, I will only be dealing with the students that are interested in further private tutorials. The cost will be 800 rand uh, for the private tutorials. Uh, and uh, you can pay it uh, as installments and that will include uh, the lesson, the exam preparation, past exam papers, uh, KCQ, one-on-one -on -one assistance and et cetera. Right, so that's what you'll be getting. Right? The usual stuff that we talked about under economics and under analytical techniques. So if you need any help, please text me, WhatsApp me. We will uh, we'll talk. We we'll talk more. Even if you don't want to join the classes, but you still need help uh, from a tutor. I've got sixty-five different tutors that I work with. Uh, who are under the, the group of varsity and limited tutors. So almost every subject, including subjects like law, whatnot, we can do almost every subject because that's what we specialize in, all right. But for today, we are meeting here to do our management, right? So your module, Introduction to Management, it's a very short module in terms of the, the units that need to be covered. However, the depth of those units would depend on your background as a, what, as a student. So there are four key units that we're going to do. There's Introduction to Management, Evolution of Management, where we'll be talking about the theories of management, the management environment, we will be talking about the external, internal, and task environment, and then the management process, where we'll be talking about organizing, planning, and et cetera, right? The process of how you manage an organization, right? So those are the four units. Like I said, very short, but as you go into each unit, you will see that each unit becomes more and more detailed. For example, theories on management. We will talk about almost like 10 different theories that we need to learn about management, right? So this module, uh, you are going to have two assignments. Uh, these assignments are going to come in the form of multiple choice quiz, right? There'll be two of them, right? And then you are also going to have your exam at the end of the semester. The exam for this one, it's actually an essay, right? It's essay format. You're going to get four or five questions, which are supposed to answer within uh, eight hours in essay format. So this one, I can guarantee you, this one is going to be an essay. But like I said, for business maths, it's likely going to be multiple choice. I'm not 100% sure, but you can confirm with your lecturer. Then for economics, it can be both. It can be essay, it can be multiple choice. It can be a mixture of the two, right? I cannot guarantee that one. But for this one, definitely this one is going to be an essay exam, right? So we'll go through past exam papers. I'll show you how to write your essays and et cetera, so that you get your work you get your higher marks, even the issues of referencing and whatnot. If there is any need for you to do referencing, I'll show you how to do the what the referencing and whatnot, right? So that's the, the, the top level. And then just like we talked about, make sure that you do all of the assignments and you pass them. Because if you do not do an assignment or if you fail an assignment, you automatically fail the module, which means you have to pay the fees again and redo it. 
So make sure that you get your, uh, your assignments and you do them in time when the assignments are what are open, all right? So uh, let's talk about unit number one. So today we are just going to do part of unit number one. We are not going to do everything in unit number one. I think we'll cover from 1.1 .1 up to maybe 1.4, right? We'll do about half of unit number one. Then the other half we'll do it uh, maybe next week, right? It's a long, it's a long unit. We'll do it maybe uh, next week, right? So these are the topics that we're going to be covering today, some of them anyway. So management. So what is management? Why do we need to start the management? So you guys, um, I'm hoping some of you are working already. I know some of you might be purely students who are not yet working, but of course you expect that after you've passed your, 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 your degree, you're going to get a job, right? So in short, uh, so I will refer you, you guys as managers, right? To, to, to help you understand what we are talking about. I will constantly be referring to you as managers because that's what we are training you to become. We are training you to become managers in the workplace, right? So you guys are going to be the managers of tomorrow, right? And the question that comes is, what actually is management, right? When we say someone is a manager, what are they? What do they do? What is the management task that they're supposed to do? What is the definition of a manager or what is the definition of the action of management if we're considering it as a verb or as a doing work? Right. So management, by definition, we look at it as a process which involves four specific things. Right. We look at it as a process which involves four specific things. So management is defined by the actions that are undertaken by managers. Right. So what do managers do is what management is. Right? So managers, what do they do? Managers plan, managers organize, managers lead, managers control. Right. So there is a chapter where we are going to deal with this. This is unit number four. We are going to go into depth in terms of what is planning, what is organizing, what is leading, what is controlling. But briefly, I will highlight what we are trying to say here. When we are saying planning, we are saying, for example, right now we are at the beginning of the year. Right. So as an organization, let's say that you are saying we are selling our laptops. Right? So you are saying we want to make profit at the end of the year. So for us to make profit, we have to plan what are we going to sell as an organization, right? Number one, we want to plan what are we going to sell. Remember, in economics, we're talking about uh, the, the three questions, right? What to produce, how to produce, and for whom to distribute. So it still ties into that. So we're saying we want to plan what are we going to sell as an organization, right? Then once we have planned, what are we going to sell? We need to plan, how are we going to procure? If we're saying we're selling laptops, where are we going to get those laptops? That's part of the plan, right? Where are we going to get the money to get those laptops? That's part of the plan, right? Where are we going to get the employees to get those laptops? That's part of the planning process that we need to undertake as a what? As management. Then once we have planned, we have to organize. So organize is the process whereby we are now taking all of those different plans that we have made and we are putting everything together. So we're saying that we're going to need 50 people, 50 employees in the organization. That was our plan. But how do we deal with those employees? We need to organize. So in terms of organization, we're now coming up with the organizational structure. We're now saying that within these 50 employees, three of them are going to be management, five of them are going to sales, one of them is going to be an accountant. In terms of this 50,000 rand that we've received in terms of cash, 5,000 of it is going to be for this, 3,000 of it is going to be for this. This is now where we are organizing the various resources, right? So that's part of management. Then once we've done that, on a daily basis, the employees in the organization need leadership, right? The sales employee need a leader need someone to look up to, need someone who's going to train them, need someone who's going to guide them in the process of the selling, in the process of whatever they are doing, that is maybe the manufacturing or the production that is happening at the workplace. So we need leadership. So that's part of the management process. Then also we are saying we made plans that we want to achieve a profit maybe of 20,000 rand at the end of the year. So we need someone to be constantly checking are we achieving the plans that we set forth to achieve? Are our costs still within the budget that we've set? So if we are now varying, of course, 
If now our costs for our profit are no longer in line with our plans, that's the activity of controlling. We are now controlling the various activities of the organization in order for them to achieve the set down objectives of the specific organization. So in short, management is the process of doing those four things, that is planning, organizing, leading, and controlling, right? And, but what is the process? What are we trying to achieve with this process? We are now trying to achieve the organizational goals. And why, how are we going to do it? We say effectively and efficiently. Why am I talking about effectively and efficiently? Anyone can plan, organize, lead, and control. But you as a manager, you have to do it at a better level. That is why you are getting, you know, the, the big man at the end of the day. That's why you see managers, you know, get a better salary than the employees. Because we're saying that they are doing the planning, the organizing, the leading, and the controlling much better than anyone else. They are doing it more effectively and more efficiently. When we're talking about efficiency, we're talking about the ratio between inputs and outputs. So we're saying that they're giving in just a little bit of inputs, but they're getting quite a lot of output at the end of the day. So that's in essence the definition of what of management from a what from a holistic point of view. But on the other side, you can also look at management from the tasks that management do. You're asking yourself, what is it that management do? We're now saying that the manager is the person who examines the various factors i.e. the environment, the various methods, i.e. the techniques, and the various principles, i.e. the theories, that enable a company to maximize its profit and achieve its objectives. So you have an objective. We want to make 20,000 profit, right? And someone is to come in and examine. When we say examine, they're investigating. They have to come in and investigate what is the current economy in South Africa. Right. What is the current methods of producing laptops? Right. What is the current theories of managing people? So after examining those three things, what should then I do in order to maximize the profit and achieve the objective? So that's what a manager does. So that's the management task. So like I said, you are defining management from two points of view, from a holistic point of view and from a management task point of view. Now, there are other definitions of management, but you see that the common thread of management definitions is that managers plan, managers organize, managers lead, managers control. That is the common thread of what management is all about. And that is what we are going to be learning throughout the whole semester. We're going to be learning how to plan, how to organize, how to lead, how to control. And the environment that affects these things and the theories that have been created about these things. So that's basically what management is, is all about. So now that we've discussed about the definition of management, now let's talk about the nature of management. The nature of management, if you, if you remember from our um, uh, introduction, we said unit one, two, three, four, right? You can see unit two is evolution of management theory. Unit three is management environment. Unit four is management process. And you, when, you, when we say here, nature of management, you see that management theory, management environment, management process at the end. So this is what we actually be learning. Throughout the whole semester, these three topics is what you're going to be learning. But that's what management is all about. It's about those three things. The first thing is what is the school of thought or what is the theory that is guiding your management way of thinking? Right. So there are different ways that people think, right? What can I, I'm trying to find a, 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 a way, um, I'm trying to find a way. It's like uh, these tactics in sports, right? There are different tactics that courts, that are uh, that coach uses in a sporting event, right? So they're saying that in order for us to win this particular game, we are going to use this particular formation is what if, it, if it's soccer, we're going to use this what this particular formation for us to be able to win this game, where we are going to have three strikers at the beginning, and then we're going to have less defenders, we're going to have a lot of people in the midfield, right? So it's just a school of thought, a way of thinking in terms of how can we succeed, right? Or maybe if, if we're talking about a religion, for example, if someone is saying if someone is a preacher, right? So you find that certain preachers will go on the strict side, that's a school of thought. 
whereas certain preachers will go on the lackadaisic side where they're saying everyone should be welcome into the church environment. That's a school of thought. So it's the same thing with management. There are different schools of thought within management. What we're saying that for you to succeed as a manager, there are different ways. So these different ways they've developed over time. So the most prominent or the most oldest school of thoughts is what we call the scientific, don't worry if it's not clear, we'll discuss this in, in detail in another, in, um, in another unit, right? The, the prominent ones, the oldest ones are called the classical school of thought. So the classical school of thought, this was developed right in the 1800s, in the beginning of the 1900s, before the world wars, right? So this was scientific management, administrative management, and the bureaucratic management. So these are, for example, scientific management. Scientific management are those type of managers who believe that uh, for, for, for an organization to succeed, there is need for specialization. There is need for us to make sure that everyone is specialized for their job. You need to hire the correct people that are specialized. You need to hire an engineer. You need to hire a specific person for that specific job. So those are the scientific managers. The administrative managers are the type of managers that believe that for an organization to succeed, there is need for administratively correct structures. You should have six, every manager should have six subordinates, no more than six subordinates. If there are more than six subordinates, a manager is not effective, something like that. So that's administrative uh, management theories, where they're focusing so much on the administrative side for it to, what, to succeed. So those are classical theories, right? And then there are behavioral theories. Behavioral theories are the, the ones that say, oh, for an organization or for a manager to succeed, they need to have maybe a good relationship with their employees, right? They need to have a good relationship with their employees. They're all about relationship with the employees. That's the behavioral theory. These were developed in the 1950s, right? And then there's the quantitative school of thought. The quantitative school of thought are those guys that believe in operations or in information systems, where they're saying that for you to succeed, there is a process that you undertake. If it's inventory, let's calculate the economic order quantity. Right. If it's quality, let's use total quality management system. Right. If it's uh, um, it's, if it's operations, right, let's use a six sigma rule of, of, of operations. These are the quantitative. They want to use mathematics in the success of what of, of management, right? And then you have uh, things like a contingency theory. Contingency theory are those type of people that say we we change with the environment. If the environment wants us to be strict as managers, we become strict as managers. If the environment wants us to have good relationship with our employees as managers, we have good relationship with our employees. They move with the environment. They first assess what the environment is, and then they make their management style to match that specific environment. So that's a school of thought. That's what we mean when we're saying what? School of thought. So in the nature of management, we are saying the are management school of thoughts, which you as the student will need to understand. There is a whole unit, maybe we'll do two weeks specifically on management school of thoughts, right? And then the next thing is there is an environment, right? So we are saying school of thought, number one. Number two, there is an environment, a management environment. So what is an environment? An environment, we're basically saying, where does your company operate? So when your company is operating, there are forces or elements that affect its operations. So for example, we say there is an internal environment. Within the internal environment, we say that there is management, there is employees, there is directors, there is the company's culture. All of those things are internal within the company and they affect your decision as a manager. So for example, if you're operating at Apple, 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 the, 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 the company that produces funds, they are an innovative company. So you cannot use uh, management styles that do not encourage innovation when you're working at Apple because their culture is innovation, which means that your management style should match the culture there. So that's internal environment. Then there's what we call task environment. Task environment, you're looking at your competitors, your customers, your suppliers, your regulators, your partners, and whatnot. They also affect how you operate. What your customer needs is what you have to supply. What your competitors are doing, you have to respond to your competitors. What your suppliers provide you, if your suppliers provide you poor quality, which means your products are also going to be poor quality. So your task environment also affects how you operate. And there is what we call the general environment. The general environment is everything else. We are now looking at technology on a global scale. We are now looking at demographics on a global scale. We are now looking at politics 
We're now looking at environment, uh, the, 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 the actual uh, climate change and whatnot. So all of these things have got an impact on how you operate and they're also part of the nature of management. So I think under nature of management, you need to know schools of thought, you need to know about the environment, and then lastly, you need to know about the organization. We're not talking about the organization, we're simply talking about the management process, right? The management process, right? So when I think the management process, we're saying a process, what basically happens is their inputs, their processes, and their outputs. That's that in any environment, in any organism, in any system, their inputs, processes, and outputs. So what are the inputs of the management process? We're not talking about the resources the people, the finances, information, and whatnot. And what are the processes of the management issues? We are talking about organizing, planning, leading, and controlling. And what are the outputs? We are not talking about the products that you give, the services that you give, the amount of profit, the amount of performance that you are getting from your employees. So in short, this is what we are going to be studying. This is what we call the nature of management or the overview of what management is all about. So management schools, schools of thought, I think we'll actually do maybe two weeks on this one. The environment, we'll do maybe one week on this one. It's not that difficult. Uh, organization, this one will probably do three or four weeks on, on, the, on the organization because there's quite a lot that you need to understand on this specific subject. All right. Okay, we've talked about this. All right. So now let's talk about uh, managerial levels, right? Skills and roles, managerial levels and skills. The last part, the roles, we'll not talk about it today. We'll do it another day, right? So what are management levels? What are management levels? So within an organization, you will see that managers are not the same. Managers are not the same. They are at different levels, right? So you just look into your organization. You know, there are people called senior managers, there are people called directors, there are people called junior managers, there are people called operations managers. Managers are different, they are not at the same level. The way they work at the company is not the same, they are at completely different levels. So there are three key levels in terms of management, right? So at the top of the organization, we are going to have top managers and then next middle level managers, first line managers, and then we have the employees. So the people who manage the day-to-day -day activities of an organization, i.e. the people who are on top of the employees are what we call first line managers. Sometimes they're referred to as supervisors, right? Or operational managers, right? So these are first line managers or low level managers or supervisors or operational managers. They are the ones that are responsible for the employees. And then after first line managers, you are going to have middle level managers, right? And then after middle level managers, you're going to have top level managers. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the issues of management and what are the different skills that are needed for each type of a what of a, uh, each type of, 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 of a manager, right? So like I said, first line managers directing the employees, they are basically supervising employees at the end of the day. They, they have no managers under them. They only have employees under them. But middle level managers, now these are supervised managers. They actually don't supervise employees, rather they supervise managers. But middle level employees, their key role, is that they are there to implement whatever ideas that the top managers have. So the top managers are actually responsible for strategy. They're responsible for thinking on behalf of the organization. They're responsible for establishing the policies, the ideas, the guidelines that will drive the success of the organization. The ones that should make sure that everything is implemented are the middle level managers. So the middle level managers are basically the ones that guide the implementation of the organization's policies at the end of the day, right? So with each type of manager, you are going to see that there are different roles that are, they have to fulfill, there are different skills that they're going to need and there are different functions that they have to undertake within the what? Uh, within, the, within the workplace, right? So let's look at top management first. Let's look at Top management. Right. So the first thing is, like I said, what is the responsibility of 
a top manager. What is the responsibility of a top manager? We are saying that overall responsible for the whole organization. So if you go, for example, to um, what's this uh, to F and B, if we say someone is a top manager at F and B, they are likely to be either part of the board of directors or they are part of the executive managers of what of of, of F and B. So these are like your CEO, maybe your CFO, and the, the, the executive part of F and B, right? Including the what, including the directors, right? So these are your top managers. So when I say they're over really responsible, these are the guys that come in and say, look, for the next five years, we want to move F and B from having branch network to being going online. You see, that's an overall idea. There's an overall direction. They're saying that FNB can no longer be a brick and mortar company. It has to transform itself into an online bank. They are the ones that come and say that. They literally give the vision, the mission, the objectives that will guide FNB's success into the what, into the future, right? Or for example, if you go to a company like Mr. Price, right? So you can see that Mr. Price is, is moving towards online. Uh, sorry, what's this company? Uh, check us, it's moving towards online, this kist, kist, right, a website, right? So that general direction is guided by the top managers. They sat down in their board meetings and then they decided, look, as an organization, we cannot continue opening more shops. We need to go online. So this is what needs to be done. So they set the overall strategy of the organization, right? They do the strategic management. They sit down, set what is the mission, the vision, the objectives. You know, pick and pay should be an established organization with online whatnot, whatnot, whatnot. They are the people that they look into the long-term part of the organization. They don't look at short-term things, but they are looking into the future of how can this organization survive into the what into the long run. So that's top management, right? But when you're looking at top management, right, what type of skills do you think a top manager needs? So you will notice that most of what a top manager does is thinking because they have to come up with strategy. So they need thinking skills. So thinking skills are called conceptual skills. So this is why you see the conceptual part is bigger in terms of the skills. So they need a lot of conceptual skills as top managers because they need to do a lot of thinking. They need to see the overall environment. They need to assess things. They need to see things from a holistic overview point of view. So they need a lot of conceptual skills, right? They also need human skills because they're going to be dealing with uh, suppliers. They're going to be dealing with partners. They're going to be dealing with the what? With the middle level managers, but they don't really need that much in terms of human skills. So they need less human skills than they need conceptual skills. Then lastly, technical skills. They don't really need technical skills. Technical schools are not that important to top level managers. That's why you notice that top level managers are not necessarily engineers, are not necessarily the chartered accountant being the top level manager or something like that. Yes, they can be, but they do not necessarily need to be. They just need to be top level thinkers. They don't need to be too technical at the end of the day because they can hire other people to be technical for them. They can hire the business analysis guys. They can hire the chartered accountants. They can hire all these other people to be technical for them, but they need to think. So the most important skill for a top level manager is conceptual or thinking skills. So that's their most important skill as a what? As a top level manager. Now, where do they spend their time? Most of their time is top level managers in terms of the functions. Remember I said that there are four things planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. So top level managers actually spend most of their time organizing. They spend most of their time organizing and planning. That's what, where they spend most of their time, right? Leading and controlling, not really. Why? Because you are saying controlling is not a function of thinking. Controlling is a function of assessing what has already been thought. Leading, again, is not really a function of thinking. Leading is you already have an idea of where you want to go, and then you're leading people to that specific thing. So it's not really part of their main thing. Their main thing is they need to plan, they need to organize for the, organ for the organization. Planning, this is where they're uh, creating their strategies. Organizing is where they are getting the resources that will be needed by the organization in order to what, to succeed in terms of the, uh, the, the, the strategies that has been what, that have been set forth. So that's top level management. We go to middle level management. 
right? So what do middle level management do? Now, middle level management naturally, because they're in the middle level, they are assigned specific departments or specific roles. So you will notice someone can be called a finance manager. That's middle level management, right? A finance manager or a human resources manager, right? Or an operations manager. They are assigned specific departments. They are assuming the role of leadership for those specific departments. That's why you see under the functions, you see leadership becomes the highest one with 36% in terms of the time, right? So they assume the role of leading specific functions of an organization. They are head of specific departments, right? Within an organization. So usually these are your finance manager, HR manager, operations manager, marketing manager, and whatnot, right? So what do these people do, right? So these people, check the ideas that have been conceptualized or thought of by the top level management, and then they make plans and implement these strategies. So top level management, for example, can say, look, we need to implement online, uh, an online shop. That's, that's a check us, right? We need to implement an online shop, right? So this is the website that we're going to be using, right? This is the strategy that we want you to use. Make sure that the prices are cheaper than the shop, than the shop price, so that people can come and buy. That's what uh, the, 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 the CEO of Checkers can say as a general idea. But that's just an idea. It still needs to be implemented, which means now the IT manager will then come in and say, okay, I get this idea. This is now my plan. For the next three months, I'm going to establish the website. For the next five months, we are going to get uh, advertised the, the website. And then the marketing manager picks up on that and says, okay, fine. I now know that there's going to be a website. We need to advertise. So for the next six months, we're going to be flighting adverts on SABC, on ETV. We're going to be going online on Facebook to advertise Skisti Skisti. And we're going to do branding on all of the motorbikes. Then the operations manager, takes the same idea and says, look, how do we implement this? We are going to need motorbikes. We're going to need people who are going to be delivering the groceries. We're going to need a warehouse where we're going to store all of these different things, right? And then the human resources manager takes the same idea and say, look, we are going to need the drivers for these motorbikes. We're going to need IT people for the IT department to manage this specific what, this specific over. So you can see that it's one idea that has been thought about by the CEO of the organization. But now when it is taken by the middle management, they then then what? Organize, they then then lead their departments within the next period in which it is being implemented. So you will notice that leading and organizing is also very, very key input in terms of what, in terms of, um, in terms of middle level management. And these are medium term people. When we say medium term, we are now saying that they are thinking in terms of the next year, the next two years. So if they are told that this idea is going to go for the next 20 years, they don't plan for the next 20 years. They don't do that. They take it for three years or for the next three years, this is what I'm going to be doing. For the next two, two, two years, this is what I'm going to be doing. So what type of skill do middle managers need? They need human skills. Right, they need human skills. Why? Because they are involving a lot of people in their processes. They are leading departments, which means that they need to have the ability to influence. They need to have the ability to lead, right? They need to have the ability to change people's minds, to direct people towards the goals that has been set up by top level managers. So you can already see that leading and organizing are the where they spend most they are what? Most of their time, right? This is different from what? From top level. Top level, we said they spend their most of their time organizing and planning. But these guys spend it leading and organizing, and they need human skills. We go to the next one, low level management, right? Low level management, like I said, these are now the supervisors of the employees. So I think that if someone is a finance manager, under the finance manager, they can be supervisors. They can be, you know, they can be the, 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 the supervisor for the credit department, the supervisor for the accounting department, the supervisor for the, um, uh, what do you call this, for the procurement department, this is all under finance, right? We go to, to marketing, they can be the supervisor for the salespeople or the manager for the salespeople, they can be the supervisor for the advertising people. 
they can be the supervisor for the you know our, our customer relationship and management right so that's under sales right you go to uh operations under operations you can get maybe the the, 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 the factory manager maybe you've got the warehouse manager maybe you've got all these different now departments you are not talking a section heads that are responsible for managing the actual employees so these do the day-to-day these do the day-to-day. They just update whatever policies, whatever rules have been set forth, whatever budgets have been set by the organization. They are just implementing those and they're just making sure that everyone is adhering to the goals. Everyone is adhering to the set plan. So you will notice that these guys actually do also quite a lot of leading they also do quite a lot of leading, right? Why do they do quite a lot of leading? Because they are the people that, they are the ones that are naturally on top of the employees. They are the ones that deal with the employees on a day-to-day -day basis. So most of their function is going to be specifical in leading. But these guys, unlike the first two, they have to be technical. Because if you are heading a sales department, you have to be able to sell. You have to have the technical skills to sell. If you're heading the warehouse department, you have to be able to understand about how warehouses operate. A CEO does not need to understand how warehouses operate. A CEO does not need to understand how sales operate, but a warehouse manager should know how a warehouse operates, right? An inventory, a stock manager should know how stock or inventory operates, right? So at the end of the day, their most important skill is going to be there technical skill or the technical expertise that is needed for their specific uh, job uh, function. So that's what, uh, that's, uh, that's a low uh, level uh, managers, right? Then uh, finally, this is the last part for today, uh, functional area management. So this is sort of a repetition in a way, but it's, it's, it's just looking at things from a different perspective. So in each organization, you will find that different departments. Think of it as department, but that's not the correct word. There are different departments. So when I say departments in management, we don't use the word departments. We use the word functions. So when I say functions, we're saying that the each specific unit has a specific function or a role that it is playing within the organization. So this is important for you as a manager because you also need to understand what is your function within the what within the organization so you will find that they are human resources as a function right so human resources is a function we're saying within an organization if we need resources if we need employees there is a department or a function or a group of individuals who will make sure that we have what we have human resources so this function can also be a function for you as a manager you can also use the function of human resource as a role we're saying that as a manager, I have to ensure that my team has adequate human resources at the end of the day. So the human resources function, we're basically looking at number one, how do we get new people into the organization? Number two, how do we compensate the people that are already in the organization? Number three, how do we ensure that the people that are in the organization have the necessary skills that are needed for them to, add, to function? So that's human resources. Accounting, accounting, you know, basically saying that are we recording? Are we doing bookkeeping for the activities that are happening in the organization? If we make a sale as an organization, are we recording that? If we pay salaries as an organization, are we recording that? So that's accounting, just basically the bookkeeping part of the what of the organization. Then financing. Financing is slightly different, although accounting and financing usually are bracketed to the same thing, but financing is slightly different from accounting. Financing, you're now looking at the management aspect of accounting. We're saying that. How are we managing cash as an organization? Do we have enough cash on a daily basis for us to be in operation, for us to be paying salaries, for us to be paying our employees, for us to be paying our suppliers? How are we managing our assets, our equipment, right? Are we replenishing or buying new equipment when it's getting old? How are we handling our budgeting? Are we within budget or are we going over budget? How are we handling our costs as an organization? How are we going to fund the different operations that we are planning to do within the coming year? So that's what, that's financing. So like I was saying, you can see this still affects you as a manager. Because although you might be a marketing manager, accounting activities affect you. Because there are certain things that you're doing within the marketing. You're going to have adverts 
that you are going to go through. So those adverts need to be recorded. So we had 50 adverts this month. 